So, what is a compressor, and why would you use one? We talked earlier about how to set up a mic pre, and we referred briefly to clipping. In our mic pre, we want the clip or overload light to come on when the highest peaks occur. That's how mic pre's are designed to work. When the light comes on, it means that the signal is good and strong, and it's designed to come on just before overloading. But when a signal is coming in that is too hot for the recording system to handle, then we get clipping, which is something we don't want. Most of the audio you'll be recording will not have a constant level. Just about any instrument or sound has variable levels throughout the performance. Take, for example, a singer. A song depends on the meaning and emotion involved, and this means that a good singer will use varying volume levels to get these things across. Quiet notes are more introspective and thoughtful, and loud ones add excitement and bring the message home. Same with guitar, piano, you name it. Now, we don't want to kill the dynamic nature that adds such colour and meaning, but we do need to control those loud bits so that they don't clip and distort our recording. A compressor is a clever device that works by reacting only when a sound reaches a certain volume level. Once it reaches this level or threshold, the compressor will act only on the sound that goes above that threshold. Anything below is unaffected. We can also determine how quickly we'll want it to do this, by how much and so on. Compression can also add more punch and density to a signal if it's used carefully. And certain makes and models have become famous, thanks to the sound they produce, just like Mike Pre's. So how do we adjust a compressor to do what we want it to do? Generally, all compressors will have the following controls, which we'll demonstrate using a drum track and the SSL G bus compressor. First up is threshold. Now this sets the point at which the gain reduction begins. In other words, how loud the signal has to be before the compressor starts to work. When the input signal gets above the threshold point, the compressor reduces the volume of that higher signal. Below that threshold, the compressor is essentially inactive and basically sits there doing nothing. Let's have a look and listen to what happens when you adjust the threshold. Notice that the higher threshold only affects those loudest peaks. And when we lower the threshold, obviously more of the sound is affected. Now compression ratio determines how much compression is applied. For example, a ratio setting of 5 to 1 means that for every 5 dB of signal above the threshold, only 1 dB will get through. 8 to 1 means for every 8 dB above the threshold, only 1 dB gets through, and so on. Some compressors have a variable ratio control, and others have prefixed ratio settings, which you select either by push button or a click dial. A ratio of 10 to 1 and above is moving into what is known as limiting, as the sound would have to go 10 dB over the threshold to let only 1 dB out. Compressors can be set to extreme levels to literally cut the top off the sound, but it's best to keep the compressor handling compression. A limiter is a separate device used specifically to level out the sound and prevent it from going any higher, no matter how much signal is being fed into it. And it can be set just like a compressor, with threshold, attack and so on. Here's a limiter in action, and listen to what happens when we activate it. very strong use of a limiter is called brick wall limiting, as it's just like the sound hitting a brick wall. Limiters are very useful for tidying up any stray peaks that the compressor might let through, and are usually found after the compressor in the signal path. Some compressors have a limiter built in. Here's Logix, and we can see the limiter and its basic controls placed here, at the end of the signal path to tidy up any stray peaks. Just in case you're wondering, the signal path 
is the path that the signal takes to and from the point of recording and the various processes it goes through and in what order. Attack time determines how fast the compressor reacts to the incoming signal. In other words, you can ask the compressor to work pretty much straight away, or you can set it to only start working after a few milliseconds. Now a fast attack time helps to prevent overload on sounds with high transients. Too slow, and it lets these peaks through, causing clipping and distortion. However, having a slower time can be useful. Let's take a bass guitar, for example, played with a plectrum. Now, the initial sound of the plectrum hitting the string is followed by the string resonating with a big fat bass note. If we set our attack time fast, it will kick in immediately and compress the plectrum sound as well as the following resonant note. Set the attack time to slow to begin compression after a few milliseconds and the plectrum sound, the striking sound of the plastic plucking the string, is left intact, with only the following bass note being compressed and controlled. You can play around with the attack time to get it just right. This works on other instruments such as kick drums, snares and so on when you want to keep the initial impact but control the following elements of the sound. Soft and hard knee is a term that describes the attack characteristics. We can set the attack to be immediate and rather ruthless, meaning that the full amount of compression or gain reduction is applied as soon as the signal crosses the threshold. This is not surprisingly called hard knee compression, and it's visually represented here. And yes, it looks like a knee, and that's how it got its name. If we adjust the ratio to be more severe with our hard knee setting, right up to 10 to 1, we can see and hear what is happening to those transients as soon as the threshold is reached. There's a very obvious point at which the compressor kicks in. But not all signals suit such a heavy-handed approach. There are plenty of times when we want our dynamic control to be working away in the background and not really be too apparent, in order to keep a more natural feel to suit the music or audio. For this, we can use a soft knee setting. Here we can see the threshold is no longer a defined point. See the curve from no compression to full compression? This means the compression ratio is gradually increased and some compression is actually applied before reaching the threshold. This means the move from uncompressed to fully compressed is much smoother and ends up sounding much more natural. Release time affects how quickly the volume returns to normal after being reduced. If this is set too fast, the volume quickly swings up and down and sounds rather unnatural depending on the material it's actually being used on. Here's an example. Notice the change from a slow setting to a fast setting. Setting this to a second or so lets the tail of the audio come through, allowing a more natural sound. Finally, we come to gain makeup. Using this lets you boost the level of the affected signal. We are, after all, reducing the gain of the loud peaks or transients, so it stands to reason that the general volume will become not only more uniform, but also reduced in overall level. This control allows you to bring the now compressed signal back up. Some compressors, like the SSL channel compressor, have an auto gain makeup function. This means the compressor compensates for the reduction in gain thanks to the lower threshold, 
by boosting the signal after compression automatically. However, most compressors give you an output pot for this very purpose, so you have to do this bit yourself. Let's see and hear this in action. Here we compress the sound, which makes the loudest overall sound coming out of the compressor lower as a result. We can see this on the meter here. By using gain makeup, we can bring the new, more controlled overall level back up to a useful volume, but still with nicely controlled transients. Next, we're going to look at some different types of compressor and what effect they have on sound.